Well, something doesn't seem to be working this morning, boys and girls. We've usually got a, a little film. Those of you with us live, uh, we've usually got a little film that comes on and, and says hello and what the show is and all that, but it's not working. I don't know why that is, but never mind. Good morning. It's Saturday the 19th of October 2013. Chris Reardon with this morning's uh, United Kingdom talk. Lucky to be here, to be honest. Late getting up today. <gasps> Two minutes past eleven. I can't believe I've got up so late. I don't know why. It was very good last night in the um, uh, uh, place that I work. Uh, yes, uh, I, usually I'm up sort of sometime between nine and ten, uh, to be honest. This morning, two minutes past eleven. Yes, and I'm supposed to have my pills at ten o'clock. So I'm a late an hour and two minutes late with my pills this morning. Which means I may die live on this program today so tell your friend that's always a good a good ratings puller when someone di why do you think they have all these people die on on soaps and eastenders and uh things like that neighbors has anyone, anyone ever died on neighbors i haven't watched that for years i watched it when it first came on i think it's about 25 years ago now it's um it's been on our telly it started, actually started the same day as East Enders and Wogan. Anyone remember that? I think it's about 25 years ago. That was, that was, that was the year, or this was the particular day, in one day the entire schedule of BBC One changed. Usually you get little bits here, change here, and change. But on this particular day, I don't know, someone took over the BBC, uh, BBC One running of that particular channel. And they must have set a day, and on this particular day, everything changed. And even the globe, the globe changed. You're too young to remember, aren't you? Even w Wendy is too young to remember that one, I think. Are you Wendy? Are you with us this morning, dear? I think you are. Anyway, there's an email address if you want to join in at uh, any point, boys and girls. My email is chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk, all right, Chris at uh, United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Wendy is indeed with us. She says good morning, morning, Wendy, and Stacey is listening as well and watching our little show. Stacey is in Lincolnshire, a quiet, it's the largest. It used to be a tiny little village, but it's a sort of uh, medium-sized town in Lincolnshire. Very nice, very nice there. I actually prefer it outside Woodall Spa, to be honest, Stacey. I like Martin. I know, because you're young and you're thinking, oh, it's a bit quiet there, nothing much to do. Yeah, perfect. Perfect, dear. Don't want all these cars trundling past you at warp speed. It's a nice little quiet place, Martin. Especially you've got to go off the main road, Stacey, dear. Have a look at places in Martin. Off the main road, though. Not that road that goes past the, ro the, uh, the, the Royal Oak, is it? Or the Oak. Go back a bit, dear. That's where you want to be. Perhaps I should buy property there. What do you reckon? <laughs> and we might also have uh, Daniel with us this morning as well. Daniel is a customer at the Black Cap. Now, this is, this is why I was late this morning coming on, I think. I got in last night really tired. Oh, I was really tired. It was, one of, it was one of those, you know, you're driving home and, you know, trying not to fall asleep. Very bad, really. You're supposed to pull over, really, if you feel like that. And have a little nap. Trouble is, I don't think I'd wake up till the next morning. I mean, there could be could be dodgy people banging on my, you know, banging on my window trying to get in while I've got my bit of shut eye. I find it very difficult to sleep in anywhere but my own bed. Do you find that at all? Hmm. Even when I go on holidays to, um wherever that may be, hotels or uh, anything like that. I just can't sleep unless I'm in my own bed. So I got home last night. I, I crawled up the stairs, you know, hands and knees. Cat always comes down. You know, Katie always comes downstairs when I come in. I open the front door, right? Close the front door, lock it. And all of a sudden, you hear a, a thump upstairs. And you know that's Katie jumping down from whichever one of her many places and she and she starts meowing at the top and says meow meow and she comes down she comes, she says the same thing every time she comes down in the kitchen 
as a stretch. You know how a cat stretches? It's ever so cute. She stretches one way, and then she stretches the other, then comes over to her food bowl, which is usually empty by this time, and meows. Meow! And if you touch her, she's got all these different noises. Ever since she had that operation last Christmas, do you remember? When I stayed at home, because she wasn't very well. Poor Katie. I had to go and visit her in cat hospital. She had a little drip on her paw and everything. She did. She comes downstairs and does the same thing every time. And if you touch her when she's not looking, she makes this strange noise. You go, Burr? like that. Burr? Do your cats do that? <laughs> anyway, so that was last night. And um, we had a very, very good night in the black cat last night. Now, I am the DJ in the black cap on Friday nights. Uh, I took over about four weeks ago now, and it steadily got better. Now, last night was a little bit, little bit um, uh, different because uh, there was a party in there before I started at 10. So we already had a good load of people to start off the evening with. Do you know what I mean? And I started at 10 o'clock, and already people were dancing. <clears throat> and it was a really good night, but... I did notice, I, I've noticed this now, as, as nights, when I get a three o'clock finish, most of my finishes are two o'clock, okay? I have one 10.30 finish, which is the quiz night on Tuesdays, and I have a 12 o'clock finish, which is on Sundays, but that's, that's about to finish that one. But generally, my, my finish times are two o'clock. However, Friday and every other Saturday, I have a three o'clock finish. And I do notice, come two o'clock, I'm getting really tired now. I generally have to have a poor old soul. I have to sit, I have to have a stall, <laughs> a stall behind where I'm DJing to sit down for a while. Because when I come into a job, you know, ten o'clock, I start, I'm up there, I start playing my tunes, and I'm quite, quite, I'm quite bouncy. You know, I like to dance along to my tunes. My niece, uh, 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 Tracy, she's got the little boy called George. She's having another child uh, next month, next year. She says my moves are, quote, you've got some funny moves, uncle. I'm not quite sure what she means by that. Some funny moves, uncle. I mean, I'd just like to dance away to my tunes, that's all. What could she mean by that? Anyway, so, uh, yes, so last night, very, very good indeed. It's been great there. I was a little bit nervous about going back to a job that I'd been at for so long. I started at Black Cap in, are you ready for this? Da 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 da! 1989. I started there and it was a Thursday night, if I remember rightly. And I remember standing up there, and you're, you're positioned, the DJ in this particular place is positioned in quite a, um, what would you say, a, a, a public place, you know, at the end, on this big stage. And you're in the middle of it. I was so nervous. And there were these two girls in there, Charlotte and Joy. I remember walking past them. And I said, all right, girls, I'm very nervous. And they, they said, oh, no, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And as it turns out, it was fine. And I ended up staying there um, 18 years. Oh, have I got my Skype up yet? Just a minute, I don't think I've got Skype. Sorry, I, I better put the Skype up in case anyone wants to call in. Yep. Um, yes, I was there 18 years uh, from 1989 to 2003-2004 was really good. I mean, really, really good. Um, and then it kind of went downhill. And has been going downhill worse and worse, apparently. Uh, I left in 2007, and it continued to go downhill, according to other people this is. Um, but now this, this, this other lad's got the place, managing the place. Uh, his name's Dan. 
and he's pulled it right up. He's he's taken it literally by by the collar and shaken it really hard. He's got rid of a lot of um, stuff going on in there, bought lots of new stuff in. And in my mind, that's exactly what it needed. There's been too many people, managers going in there and keeping it going as it is. Remembering what I just told you, that it's been going down, it's been failing for a long time. But the people, the managers going in there, have continued it on this exactly the same, almost as it was in 1989, when it was really very successful. I would go in there um, during that period, 1989, right the way through to 2000, and you would have a queue of people waiting to go in there when, that, when it opened. This this gradually disappeared as the as the years went on. But all the people that have been going in there have been trying to to, to do it as it always has been. Do you see what I mean? No one seemed to be willing to change things. And I certainly looked at it before I left, and I thought there's stuff here that needs to be changed. And it never was. No one dared to try and change anything. Well, this lad's come in. And the funny thing is, I knew him when he was a boy coming to um, a place in Romford called Colours, where I DJ'd. Or he might have been, because it moved from Romford to Basildon. He might have been coming to the Basildon one, or the Romford one, or both. I can't remember. His name's Dan. And he used to come there as a boy dancing. And now... This same boy that used to come to my tunes and dance is now running the Black Cap. He's changed quite a lot of stuff in there. Quite a lot. And it's working. So I was quite surprised a few weeks ago when he sent me a Facebook message asking if I wanted to do the Fridays. And I did think at once, well, you know, is it a good idea to go back to a place where you've been happy for so long, except in the last couple of years, you know, before I left in 2007, I've become very, very unhappy there. I wasn't happy with the way it was being run and this, that and the other. Uh, you, could, you could, of course, say that, well, you've done 18 years. Maybe it was time for you to move. I think it was. Absolutely. I mean, but if you're not, if in, in this job, if you're not happy at something, you have to go. That's it. So I did. So I did go. Um, and I thought, surely, you know, you want some more young faces in there. Anyway, I sent him a message back and he said, you know, are you sure you want me to do this? Without mentioning the young faces in case I, you know, pulled the rug from me under my own feet. And he says, yes. So I've gone back in there. And it's, I think it's worked. And I'm really happy about that. Really happy. And you, you walk in somewhere like that and it, it does feel like home. I think um, if you live in the same place for years and years and you move, then, then that's a bit of a wrench, isn't it? Perhaps you've done it yourself. Have you lived somewhere for years and years, and, and then you moved and you thought, oh, you know, I wish I hadn't moved now. Did you ever think that? Well, I didn't think that of the Black Cat. You know, I was glad to have left when I left. I was really unhappy with how it was being run, really unhappy. I didn't feel like I, I was getting any backing from anywhere, so I had to go. <clears throat> but I've gone back in there, and... It, 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 it's great. I mean, it's really great. A lot of things have been changed there. Certainly the music changes. You know, you, you can't be playing the same music as, as you were in the 80s or 90s or in the 2000s. Also, the style of how I play when I'm DJing has changed a lot as well. For example, when I went in there in 
89, it was all 7-inch discs and 12-inch discs. We, and, and, you know, and you play a record, then you talk, and then you play another record, then you talk. That's how it was then. As time went on, you started mixing the music together. So, from one track to the next track, you j it'd just be like one long record the, the whole night, if you see what I mean. Right? Um... Recently, though, in the last, I say recently, in the last six or seven years, I've changed my style in that I no longer mix the music together. It's all play a record, uh, play a or they don't have records now, song. The kids call them songs, or the children, not children, are they? The young people call them songs. They don't call them records anymore, they're songs. You know, it's just sometimes they come up, and I still forget myself. Do you want me to play you a record, eh? You go, eight. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, do you want a couple of songs on? Well, they might, the tracks, they seem to understand the word tracks. Right? And I put the records on, or the song, see, I've done it again. I put the song on, but I don't mix them together. And one of the reasons is that the tempos of these songs are all over the place. Whereas when you do a mix, they've all got to be roughly the same tempo. That's the same... Uh, beats in a minute usually something around 125 130 beats in a minute that'll give you a nice sort of really easy steady going and you might get up to 150 or you've got to do it gradually now it goes from one to the other chop 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 like that and i found young people have a very short attention span this is one of the reasons i did this and if you mix three or four records to uh, songs together and each song is like six or seven minutes, you lose the dance floor. They go and sit down. Now, I've always played requests. If people come and ask for something, it goes on. Simple as that. Might not be immediately, because even, even though I just told you, you know, uh, the, the, the music goes up and down, and w when I said that, uh, by that I mean in tempo. In tempo. That, you know, there, there is a, an order in which m me, as a DJ, thinks they should go on. That's where the skill part of it comes in. You know, you, you can't just randomly put on music in a, in a DJ uh, club environment. You've got to work out in your own brain, right, OK, well, that one to go there, that one. You know, someone, some girl or boy might come up and say, oh, could you put this on, please? And I look at it. And it might be, it might be, I might have 10 seconds to go before the song playing now is due to finish. And then this person asks me for a record. I'm, ah, that'll go now. And bang, it goes straight on. Other times you might wait 20 minutes or half an hour. Like, if it's a house, housey type track, I'd like to rather play that sort of later on in the evening, not at the beginning. Do you see what I mean? That's where the skill of it comes in. So that's how I play now. I play my songs back to back. Sometimes I might talk in, uh, between them. Might be to um, say something to someone down there, perhaps try and make them laugh. Maybe someone looking a bit lonely down there. I might try and pull them in a little bit more, if you see what I mean. Might be a birthday. Might be a promotion at the bar. You know, go to the bar now, you get a shot for a pound. Something like that. And that, that's how I do it now. I have evolved. I have evolved with the crowd. You must evolve with the crowd. I've said this before on the show. If you're a DJ, you must evolve with the crowd. Don't think that what you were doing five years ago is right for now. I've seen many DJs trip up like this. Okay? So they come in at a young age. They, they play what they're doing. And that's okay. And they tend to move. As they're young, they will move with the crowd. But then they get to this age. I don't know exactly where it is. <clears throat> I think I was probably guilty of this for a while as well. And you have your own style, okay? My style was mixing the tunes together. Now, you need to be a little bit savvy about this and realise, hang on a minute, this isn't working so much anymore. 
This isn't working as well as it used to. And then you've got to find something else. You've got to change your style. Because you stick to that style, gradually the people start walking away. That's when it goes, and you stick, and you stick, and you stick to the style. And before you know where you are, you're out of a job and you can't get another one because you refuse the change. You must watch what these 18 to 25 year olds are asking for. You absolutely must, because they're the ones coming up. And then try and sort of do your own thing on what they're asking for. And then you'll be okay. I certainly never ever thought at 50 I'd still be DJing. I think there's a certain element of luck in it as well. There's a big element of luck. Right place at right time, that sort of thing, you know. So this is, translate that back to the black cap. That's how I do it now. I play a record. Uh, see? I'm stuck with that word record in my brain. You play a song. Uh, you play the next song, you might talk a bit. No, I mean, we're not excessive talking. I mean, we're not talking like a show like this. You know, I don't... <laughs> I don't play a song and then talk for ten minutes. It'd be like um, one of the customers last night. Who's that regular who comes in? Daniel, who might be with us today. Daniel in Camden. Good morning, sir, if you're with us today. This is his first time with the show. And he comes up and asks for a song. And he knows, you know, sometimes it goes on earlier, sometimes it goes on later. He knows that. And he comes up and he dances. His other half at the moment, he's got a bad back. I think he's twisted his spine or something. It sounded nasty anyway. He's, so he's not uh, around for a while. But Daniel comes up on the stage. He has a little chat with us, don't you? And that's how it works. I might say, good evening, Daniel, nice to see you tonight. And that, that's it, you know, that, I might say that in between the records or over the introduction to a record, just to make people feel welcome. And um, I did, I, I'm, I'm very, very pleased, really, to, pee, to be um, back at the Black Cap on a Friday night. I really am pleased. I'm even more than that pleased. I'm, I'm pleased that it seems to be working quite well. All right, boys and girls, uh, you can join us by email. Whether you're watching a show live or you're watching a recording, you can join in by email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. All right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Now, if you're with us live, then, uh, and it's, how do you know if you're with us live? Well, have a look at your clock. It's just coming up to about 25 past 12 on Saturday the 19th of October 2013. If that's the time where you are now, you are indeed with us live. And you can join in live uh, either by Skype. I have Skype. My Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon, C H R I S. R E A R D O N. Chris Reardon is my Skype name. C H R I S R E A R D O N. Just click on the add now thing, I'll add you. And you can either send a message like that or or ring me. And it'd be quite nice to talk to one or two people on the show today. I was going to do a shorter show because my voice isn't quite here, but it, 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 it's, it's not getting any worse, so I think we'll hang around for a little while. Especially as, you know, I can't have lunch yet because I've only I just had breakfast. Just got up. I've done that before. Have you ever had lunch and breakfast sort of with an hour of each other? Usually at the airport. You know, because it's, it's all free in the, in the lounge. So you have <laughs> breakfast until 11.30 and then the lunch comes out at 12. Well, you don't want to miss out, do you? <laughs> uh, and we also have a London phone number. Local London number. The number is 020 8133 six three five eight all right o two o eight one double three six three five eight that's how you can join in this, this uh, on this saturday morning uh, some messages coming in good morning to millie millie's there in the united states good morning millie how are you today she is in champlin champlin us of a 
Morning, Millie. And, um... There was a mess another message here somewhere. Where has it gone now? Marge is here as well. Who says, hi, Chris. I added Skype through my Facebook account. So I need to add you again, if you don't mind. Uh, thank you, Marge. And indeed, Marge from Oklahoma is on the line now. Good morning, Marge. Good morning. Am I live? You are indeed live. I'm not dead. I'm alive. Oh, I've been <laughs> dead for years. My career has, anyway. <laughs> Hello. Are you talking to somebody else? Millie or somebody? No, I'm talking to you. Oh, oh, okay. okay. Mars, um, you've now got two Skype things, have you? Well, I had What's trouble there? getting my, logged on. It wouldn't let me, so I thought, well, I'll just ah, log on Facebook. Well, I've got Marge Smith and Marge Spirit Dove now. You've got oh. two Skypes. Which yeah, one, that's what which one I should I have, my... the one that you're ringing on? Uh, keep the one that says Marge Spirit. Uh, well, Facebook one, I think. Wait a minute. Well, you're 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 on. You're now on the Marge Smith one. Okay, just keep this one, and I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and forget the other one. But I I couldn't get this one to come on. It kept giving me a heck. Of it's a very time. confusing, Marge. You're confusing me, small Marge. Oh, because I got up. So, I got up too late. I got up so late. It's two minutes past eleven. I know we got a communication problem. What we have here is a failure to communicate. You remember that? Who said that? We have a failure to communicate. <laughs> who said that? Oh, you don't know. See, we have a failure to communicate. Go on, who said that? Oh, uh, uh, gosh. I think it was Ross Perot. Or was well, it wasn't it? one of your presidents. No, 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 no. It was Ross Perot. You remember Ross Perot with the big ears? You remember him? No, I don't. Uh, Ross oh, Ross, okay. who? Say that again, Ross. Ross Perot, I think. Never heard he, of him. He was a guy. He was a third party runner, and he he was a not not a Democrat, not a Republican, and he was a rich billionaire businessman. He oh right, run, yes, yes. Going to run for president or something? I think that was who said that. I may have to look that up. <laughs> Too early in the morning. So how are you doing this week? I'm very well. I've got a bit of bit of a throat today. It's not sore, but the the noise isn't coming out. Do you know what I mean, Marge? Oh well, just drink, just honey and lemon and. <laughs> oh, the noise! The noise isn't coming out of me today. No. You ever try gargling with apple cider vinegar salt? Oh, I don't uh, like salt. the sound of that apple cider vinegar. Well, you mix it. You know, uh, you <coughs> put, yeah. You warm it and you gargle it. Put some pepper and some salt and gargle it. It'll it'll burn, but boy, look, I have cleared out a strep throat overnight. I've got I've got I've got um I've got peanut butter here today. Okay. Now the reason I I've <laughs> well the reason I've got peanut butter is that uh, there was a, a story in the paper uh, a couple of weeks ago, and it's it says it was supposed to be a te a test for Alzheimer's. A test for Alzheimer's. Yes. Yes. Apparently. If you, if you, because, I don't know, there's something in peanut butter which affects only certain nerves in your nose or something like that. And you're supposed to close one nostril and smell with it mm -hmm. and then close the other nostril and smell with it. And if one of the nostrils doesn't work, then that's a sign of Alzheimer's is coming. Uh, you, are you worried you're getting Alzheimer's? Well, I think we're going to try it now, Marge, to be honest. Oh, okay. Right, so I've now opened the jar of peanut butter. I've got to tell you, I'm not a fan of peanut butter. I think it's the most vile oh. stuff ever. If you forget what you're doing, then you probably got Alzheimer's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's horrible, this stuff. Right, so here we go. Let's try the right one first. Right, uh, uh. You're sticking oh. it up your nose because oh, I'm not that's... watching you. <laughs> You yeah, I can smell that all right with that. And now I try the left one. Oh, it's even worse than the left. No, I don't think I've got Alzheimer's coming. Oh, okay. What brand is that? Um, Sainsbury's Basics. Oh, Peter Pan's not bad. I, I, I just want to point out that I don't go and buy the... But I only bought the, this for this thing. Usually I'm in Waitrose, as you know. Thank you. Yeah. They've got deal on the fish. I was watching about the brain and stuff. You start taking nu nutrition. Of course, you know me. I'm into yeah. nutrition. Yeah, yeah. Trying yeah. to, trying to get my health back. And uh, I've had some really good luck with uh, taking tart cherry for my joint pain. What cherry? Uh, tart cherry. T 
Tart Jerry. Uh huh. What's it's that in capsule name? form. It, it's uh, cherries. I mean, but they're in a capsule. You can buy them at your health food store. And uh, is there for the uric acid in your body? Like you drink too much tea, coffee, meat, which well, you don't drink, have meat, no, but no. Your, your body builds up uric acids and causes oh, yes. inflammation in your joints. You said that about the tea, didn't yeah. you? You said yeah. that was acid. And this would be it. great. I mean, because I haven't had pain for nearly a week now. I've been taking this cherry. And uh, it also has effect of melatonin helps you sleep. Yeah. I said, you know, I think our, if we could just find it, our you know creator put everything here for us to take, you know. You're very it's, good at all that. Um, you should have your own little shop selling this stuff, you know. No, not till I get myself. You know, as they say, uh, doctor, heal yourself. I can tell other people, but if I don't take it, it's not going to be any good, yeah, you know. Yeah. I, knowing all this stuff and not using it, it's not going to work. No. Uh, well, we had a pretty uh, fair week this week. We had a bunch of cows killed up on the highway down uh, oh. west of me. How did I that heard happen? Four or five cows, I think, they hit. What, in separate, uh, separate occasions? No, one time on a bridge. They All ran right. into it during the night. You know how they're black anyway? It, just, it totaled like five cars. Right. And... Um, Nobody was hurt or killed, but I said, "Man, that's that's rough." You ever run into a cow? You know, my brother well, ran over. You know, the, the 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 last road I come up to um get to my house, we have uh, deers. Yeah, deers. I've almost just, heard yeah. deers. I told you about that when it come in front of my motorcycle. Yes, if yes, you remember yeah, or not? Yeah. There, there's a herd of them down the road here. They are so adorable with those tails. I don't know if you got white uh, white tail deer. Is that oh. what you got? No, they're they're brown. They're brown uh, they're with tails. white brown I mean, with white tails. spots on them. Okay. Oh no. Well, these got big, huge white. Looks like a flag when they wave it. They flip it back and forth. And when they're <laughs> running, it's so cute because they kind of like posturize, you know, yeah. posture themselves. Yeah, yeah. And they it will have that tail flopping. But anyway, I said, yeah, they, um, I drive that way a lot of times. But of course, I, I don't drive at night. That's why I was watching your video yeah. about driving. That make that just unnerves the heck. Oh out yes, of yes, the, <laughs> the 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 bus that nearly um, that yeah. went through the red light and um, crossed over my path. Yes, I've I've got that story for later on if we have time. Okay, mm. okay, okay. Well, um, I guess. Oh, I'm trying to think of what else I was going to talk about. Well, oh, you sent government. me a, you sent me a message last night. Uh -huh. um, any suggestions on what to get? Oh, it might have been Thursday on what to get someone oh. who is about to have their sixtieth anniversary and not have to spend a lot of money doing it because you don't have much to spend. Um, which, to be honest, Marge, I think um, whether or not you've got lots of money to spend, I would say the same thing. I've always believed the best gift you can give someone is something you've made yourself. Yeah. I well, really that's what do. I mean. If it was you know, anything that didn't cost, ex like, you know, it says the diamond yeah. is for the 60th anniversary, and I said, well, I'm not going to go out and buy them a diamond. And yeah, I thought, yeah. I meant something that was I mean, really... I think some, you know, sometimes, you know, people say, what do you want for Christmas? And they, they or whatever. Oh, and, you, know, know you know, and they come out with all these demands. No, I mean, the best present... Now, for example, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I hope she's not watching this. I, don't, I doubt that my sister would be watching this. But, for example, my sister was... I, mean, I rang her up the other day, and I was like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm making... Now, what was she making? Was it jam? No, it wasn't jam. She was, oh, she was. Uh, she says I'm making pick a lily. Now, do you have pick a lily? Pick a lily. Yeah. I've heard that word, but I don't know what it is. Oh, it's, is it's it? this. It's this. Um, it's this stuff in a jar, and it's yellow, and it's horrible. <laughs> or at least <laughs> I, d I don't like it anyway. But other people oh. do, you know. Other people like it. So she was making pick a lily. I said, Oh my God, what are you eating that for? She said, Oh, it's not for me. It's for her mother-in-law. And her husband, because they like it. So she's making she it hate, she from hates scratch. Her <laughs> yeah, you can buy this in the supermarket. And I'm, I'm like, oh, right. I said, well, what else have you made then? She said, oh, I've been making strawberry jam. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. I said, right. So, so I put the phone down on her. And then I thought, right, that's what I'm going to ask for her for Christmas. Because she hasn't got much money. Same as you. She hasn't got much money at all, right? So I thought, I'll ask her... For some of her homemade, when she says, what do you want for Christmas? She always does. You know, what do you want for Christmas? I should say to her, I would like some of your homemade produce this year, please. 
And she might say, well, what do you want? And then I'll set her some tasks. I'd like, I'm going to ask her to try and make some homemade tomato sauce. Yeah. Well, that's I, I like us. You know, I, my mother is one that doesn't want you buy her things. Yeah. Which is kind of frustrating the way. You know, you want, you love somebody, you want to give them something, you know. Well, make, no, and, no, make something. I, yeah, like, you know, I know, but you still so, got to buy stuff to make yeah. stuff, you know, or not said, to go out in the woods and dig up a tree limb or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've still got to buy something. You could do to that. Dig up a tree. Yeah. Dig up a small tree. Put a bit of rock well, And I, <laughs> well, I said to her, I, I said to her, I went to the neighbor's house and dug up one of their plants. <laughs> I said to her, "Have you ever made Have you ever made apple sauce?" She says, "Oh no!" And then she yeah. quick, quickly types in on the internet for apple sauce. She said, "Oh." I said, what? She said, oh, it's got all butter in it. I said, well, what's that? So she read this list of stuff. She said, there's all uh -huh. butter in it. She said, oh, you wouldn't have thought there was any of that in apple sauce. And then she, there was a gap, you know, while she was thinking. She said, yeah. hang on a minute, I'm going to find another recipe. So she looked. And, of course, there's all these different recipes for apple sauce. All different uh -huh. types. Some have got cinnamon in, some something else. And so I'm going to I'm gonna write a little list of things to do. I'm going to ask her for that for Christmas. And there you go. You can't get better than something someone's made. If like a homemade card or something like that. Of course, if you are a child, that may not work. <laughs> well, yeah, I, did, I did make something. I got her a card, which it was at the dollars. It's a nice card. But I thought, wonder what songs they had in 1953. That's the year they were married. And what love songs were in yes. 1953. And so I found online, I downloaded Kitty Wells and, and Bob Willis. Yes. And one of the songs, it says, have I told you lately that I love you? I know Have that one. I told you lately that I care? You know, Jim, I thought that did, was really great. <laughs> did Jim Reeves do that as well, that one? Um, I don't... Yeah, I bet he did. But oh, no, no, Rod, Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. Rod Stewart. Have I well, told I you lately that I love you? Yeah. That one. You're nobody till somebody loves you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Anyway, I made up a big CD of that, and it, and that's what I'm giving her for. I if thought you that get, would be, you know, uh, what, what, is, what, is what is the celebration? What is the celebration? I'm sorry. What is the celebration again? The sixtieth. That sixtieth anniversary. Wedding. Get 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 the the actual date they were married, uh -huh. and find some song. Uh, uh, there be certain songs that are released on that date or that week oh, as well. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, this is a yeah. whole year. Yes, I, I, exactly. I didn't, yes, of course, yeah. I just downloaded. So, um, but that's true. I could do that. I don't know what day that they were married, hmm. though. I just put 1953, and that's what yeah. come up. So they were made. That was a number one hit of that year. You that's know. ten years before I was born, Marge. Well, I'm so pleased uh, there are older people. <laughs> yeah, but see, 53. I mean, I'm 59 model. I call yeah. it 59. Model. If I was a 59 T bird, six, you know. I'd be a, a classic. <laughs> you ever think about that? You're like a car, you know, you you, you get better with age. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, um, yeah and see, it's got cold here. It's oh, no, not like here. No, we're quite, we're, we're unusually warm for this time of year. Let me tell you, the heating has not been turned on yet. I, were, I, I laughed when Ron was talking about in that Facebook. You're just like me. I, I had the... I don't hardly turn the heater on until it gets. You're in a trailer. You're in a trailer, aren't you? Camper, a big fifth. It's a big fifth. So, wheel. how do you how do you heat that? I've got a little square box. It's a two uh, two twenty. You know, uh, electricity. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Oh, two twenty. Right, yes, yes. Okay, and it's uh, it's this turns the thermostat on and it kicks on and you turn it. You know, it don't have like a thermostat, but it's instant heat. Instant. Right. I mean, it's a little. It's probably a uh, eight by eight square box. It mounts up in the corner of the of the building. I mean, corner of my um, kitchen in here. Yes. And and it's got a blower. It blows out heat. And when oh, you turn it you've on, got a fan it, heater. It, it, yeah. yeah the, it, it costs me about a hundred dollars a month. Well, I was going to say that they are the most 
I think fan heaters are the most expensive things to run out of all types of heating. Well, this is a this is more like a shop. I mean, it's for, yeah. it's made for instant heavy heat, not like the ones you buy in the. I know, and, yeah, I know. You know, yeah. I know, sorry, I'm trying to explain it, but I'm trying to figure out how to how to explain. It. But anyway, it's uh, it's a nice. It keeps me warm. I mean, it don't take a few minutes, and it's it's warm in here. Right. I used to live in a trailer with a wood stove. That's all the heat I had. Yes. Yes. But, yeah, but you know, it was seventy five dollars for my whole winter to have heat. Thirty five. Seventy five. How did you do 75 that? Seventy five dollars. And what? How did you do that? One rick of wood. A rick is is uh, four foot high, six feet long, right? And probably mm-hmm. two foot long stick uh, uh, of wow. wood, you know, wood pile. And it's and nice that, to have a wood I, fire. The only thing is, you know, it's it's lighting the damn thing, isn't it? Well, yeah, of course I didn't have, I could have cut it myself, but I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have a chainsaw, so. But the thing is, one time my stovepipe caught on fire. Oh. And I'm in a trailer house, you know, and I looked out there and my stovepipe was glowing red. <laughs> oh my. Which, I went out there and I opened the bottom and it caught on fire. I didn't realize, you know, you, you open that, well, it gave it oxygen. And so that creosote, you know what creosote yes. is? Yeah, nasty it stuff. Fire, yeah. yeah. But at least the stovepipe was away from the trailer. When yeah, I stuffed a wet, I grabbed a bucket of water and stuffed the rag up in it. We're and, not. We don't. We don't. You. We're not allowed to use creosote anymore. Um, no, it's supposed. Apparently, it caused can causes cancer. Well, this is creosote. <clears throat> it's built by the fire itself. Right. It caused yeah. creosote into yeah, the pipe. Yeah, yeah. Why and not? I realized, I said, well, my stove was not made right. I wasn't, it was, the stove pipe wasn't tall yes. enough. And I was supposed to put some stuff in there to help break, which I learned my lesson, you know, after that. I it's learned a bit worrying, Marge, but, isn't it? It's a bit worrying, that. Huh? A bit worrying, that. Yeah. Well, I tell you, I had to breathe smoke. And sometimes if the wind got up right, it would blow up, you know, like the wind was, mm. uh, it, a certain speed, it blows smoke back in the house. Oh, that was poor days. You talk about poor. I mean, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and you stuff holes with plastic. I mean, people don't. When I, it, it frustrates me. I say, you're living in these nice homes and you're complaining. Yeah, you know, you've well. got central heat and air and you got a beautiful home. And they still complain. The people I work for, you know, like housekeeping. Yeah. I love them. But times they complain about the most Minorest writer in Minor stuff. Minor things, yes, you know? yeah, yeah. And I thought, just lose all this. Then you can complain. <laughs> well, <laughs> when, when when my friend comes around here, he's always moaning it's cold around here. Because he has his heating on all the time. You know, he's all the time he's got this heating on. And you go around there, oh, it's so hot, Marge. I get so oh, hot oh. in there. And, of course, that's why it's cold all the time. Because well, he's got I the bloody heating on all day. And they, used, they when I go into these elderly people... And there's like ovens, you know. I have to turn yeah. it. I yeah. have to turn the uh, air conditioning on to 68 just to, just to work. I mean, it's yeah. just like an oven, you know. Well, but, I'm I, I'm quite happy in my house, and it can be 15, 15 or even 14. I'm not cold now. 15. It's up to 15. Uh, 30, 40, 56, 60, 58, 60, 57. 57, I'm quite happy, 57, that's, 57. That's not, I'm still not cold, no. That's a little co- cool, well, it's, like I said, it's, well, it says 1.0 1, 1. Celsius. Yeah. It's right outside right now, 33 degrees what? outside. Did, it's what, and, 1, and, did you say 1? Well, 1. 1.0 is what, oh, wow. I tried to convert it. No, no, it, no, it, we've got, um, I, I estimate it to be about 14 or 15 outside at the moment. What's 33 degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? My oh, converter don't um, look right. Thirty-three. Well, it's minus thirty well, 30, and a half. See, thirty-two. It's about one, yeah, it's about one and a half. One and a half. One point five. Okay. Yeah, one point oh. Well, I know thirty-two degrees Fahrenheit is freezing, and yes. it's thirty-three outside right, right now. Right. right now, it's thirty-three degrees. Right. I reckon so, it's about. And I don't have the heat on in the house in my camper, but see, I've got dogs. Yeah. <laughs> and then I, you know, they put out body heat. Yes, my of course. Dog, you yeah. know. We, yeah. we all, and I got a light, uh, one of those uh, 100, not, not 100 watt, a 60 watt light bulb sitting by me, and it's putting out heat. Yeah. And it's actually, yeah. four, this is what you call a four season camper. Mm-hmm. It's for, it's for made for going out and camping in the wintertime. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah. Yeah. like hunters yeah. will go out, but it's a big, it's a big, uh, fifth wheel, 
but it's it's well insulated. Mm, but I got mm. a family of mice moved in. Every year I have to deal with these mice. Mice. And I, <laughs> mice. Yeah. Where and are they I getting don't in? Then? Kill them. How are they getting huh? in? They chew through the floor, and they go up like on the axles. I get. I don't. I think they go up on the axles. And I found two holes which I plug. But I've got some moved in upstairs. Oh, I smell rat poop, you know. And I've been cleaning. And I, I put a trap, and this made me cry. I, I, I caught a baby mouse, but oh. I caught it on its back. And it oh was laying gosh. there struggling. And, um, and I said, oh. there's got to be a better way. I don't want to even kill mice, you know. <laughs> and I got a live trap where they just go in, and, you know, and they can't get out. So now... I look, you know, I take that down the road about, Mom said, well, they're just going to come back. I said, know, well, yeah, they're well, walk how far, I don't know how far do they travel, mice. That's like cats, you know, cats, said, well, cats go for miles woods, and go miles. Go cats do, did not they? Huh? Cats go for miles and miles, cats. Yeah, dogs. Well, there's dogs that's gone thousands of miles just to find their owners, yeah. Gosh. I said, well, they're, what's funny is they're, they're, they're not like regular mice. What color are your mice? Have you ever seen it? Oh, you different, caught one? different, different colors, white, brown, whatever, yeah. These are beautiful brown with different white color. bellies. They right. got a white belly. They, they look like a domestic mouse that you buy, you know, for pets. Yeah, yeah. I've never yeah. seen them with white belly before. <laughs> oh, Marge, someone's late this morning. Richard. Richard said, so sorry I'm late. My pussy woke me up at 7.30 and I'm all time shifted and did not see the time. Forgive me. So you've got a late as well, Richard. Richard in well, Croydon. I He's late. Oh, I was. I got late, I late this morning, I, Richard. I didn't know, get to your two minutes past minutes eleven. I'm sorry. I spent thirty minutes trying to get my microphone to work, and it broke in half. It wouldn't, and my sound card wouldn't work. Oh. I said, "There's those gremlins that just don't want me to be on your." Show. Well, you're here. You've been on now, Marge. It That's took it. me thirty minutes. Good. I, 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 Good. I, did. I had no microphone, and then my sound card went out, and I thought, "I said, oh wait a minute, I got one of these." Externals that you plug in. Yeah. So I plugged that in. I still had no sound. I plugged in the wrong cord. Oh, and then I put my headset on, and it broke in half. And that's just hanging here, you know. <laughs> well, it still works, Marge. Bit of tape would do that. Bit of gaffer Is tape. That how, gaffer tape that fixes you when everything. It, whenever you're at work, does your equipment have ever, ever do stuff like that? Uh, when you're yes. At work, so well, it did yesterday. Funnily enough. Um, oh. Because uh, my laptop is on Windows 8. This is the one I DJ with. And we've uh, just had an update to 8.1. So I updated it yesterday afternoon. That was it. Well, it plugged in, no sound. And the sound card that I plugged into it, for some reason it had, it had knocked out the drivers. So I just re-downloaded them again quickly and it worked. So that, that was cured. Yeah. Well, did you ever find you a hard case like you wanted? A what? A hard case? You wanted a hard... Uh, no, 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 I never... I, I, I gave up looking. I got fed up looking. Uh, I thought I'll just put up with the one that I've got. That's it. Well, yeah, I was going to say, that, that would be nice. Yeah. Maybe somebody of your listeners... Dear I'll, listeners have a, I'll have a look in America. <laughs> I might I, send you one for Christmas. <laughs> I'll have a, I'll have a look on, in, in America when I'm near America. I wish I could find one at a garage sale. I'd I'll send go, you I'll one. I'm going to have a look in Walmart when I'm in Florida. Did you see my Walmart video? Yeah, I not yet. You? No, I haven't watched it yet. No. Oh, uh, no. okay. You I sent it when I was at work, then I'd come home and I was very tired, oh, so I went to bed. I know. You just worked in your little rear off, I know. It'll get better. It's wintertime. It gets uh, where you, you know, I don't know if you, you work the same, I guess, winter and summer, don't you? Do I look the, the same? Sa hours. What do you mean, look the same? Work. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Work. Well, if, if nothing changes, yeah. It, I, I'm, I'm think, thinking seasonal work. We will, have, um, <laughs> we will have our clocks going back in a couple of weeks' time. Yeah. So I'm, watch out I'm for that for, one, yeah. Of course, a lot of people, you know, it uh, depends on who you are. Some people like uh, Christmas and stuff. Yes. I like, you know, holidays and you. Um, I like Halloween, but I don't like the gory Halloween. You know, the destructive yeah. part yeah. where people yeah. dress like zombies. <laughs> my, well, they do. My, they walk my, around the streets like zombies. Well, they look like that most of the time here now, <laughs> with their heads buried in the bloody mobile phones as a wandering across the road. 
I like this this uh, this holiday because it's the day that uh, remembrance of your ancestors. That's right. Yes, Passover. Yes. Yes. And uh, which in your Christian deal, it was All Saints Day. I think didn't the saints rise out of the graves or something? Is that what I that don't know. I keep hanging around graveyards waiting no, for this to all- happen, but no, I don't see anything happening. Maybe well, I'm no, going it's, on the wrong it's day. All, Hall- all Hallows Eve. You, you know the story of that, yes, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. Is that where the saints rose when Jesus rose or something? No. I'm asking Look, you. Jesus I don't know. Rose, Jesus rose at Easter. Oh. Uh, Jesus rose at Easter. I'm not quite sure. It's All Saints Day. We celebrate. Oh, um, I know that. I'm trying people, to think. Yeah. What, For what does all it the saints <laughs> who from <laughs> their labors was one of my well, favorite e- hymns Easter of all is time. Also, is also combined with with Ostara, which is a fertility holiday. Did you, you know that? No. O- Ostara. No. Yeah, it's where you get the. That's, why do you think you got the Easter bunny? <laughs> The Easter Bunny. It's fertility. It's when uh, the Easter the Bunny is not here. Huh? You're too late for the Easter Bunny. No, I was telling you that's where the bunny comes from. The, the <laughs> fertility of Ostara. That's where you get Easter. Ostara. Easter. Easter. That word. That word. Ostara. I'm talking about the word, not the religion no. part. I'm talking about the. the you see, the pagans practice fertility rites in the spring, right? Because of the you know crops and and new growth and new birth and you know the bunny rabbit's pretty fertile, <laughs> you know. Don't have any rabbit. I don't have any rabbits in the garden. There's probably some uh-huh. few hiding underneath the bushes round here. There's all sorts yeah. of things hiding behind the trees round here, March. Well, that's my two fr- favorite times is is spring and fall when the when the yes. the leaves yes, are turning. Yes. And uh, and I was just wondering, you know, I heard on the radio. I got to get. I listened to a lady. She kind of hacked me off a little bit. Maybe she was mouthing off about. So I don't know why they they even uh, mentioned pagan holidays in school. I said, Hey, wait a minute! You're practicing pagan holidays when you're doing Eastern and and uh, Halloween because I'm talking about the origins because the pagans were converted, see, and they kept their holiday. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. And uh, it kind of made me a little hacked off, like she was mouthing off. I said, uh, you know, non-main religions get so abused sometimes in the media. <laughs> oh, Fox Radio, you know, Fox oh, TV. Oh, bloody they, Fox. Yeah, I don't watch any of that old rubbish. He, she was making, did I be a weekend on one of my bad days? You know, like, putting put down, I don't think we should put down anybody. You know, no. I don't put down people. No. Especially in the media. And I thought, they you know, your days of the week are pagan. Oh, they are. You know that? Yeah, the well, days done, of the week. You've done very well today, Marge. 27-minute phone call we've had. That's good. Oh, oh. I didn't realize That's it, wonderful. Uh, 27 minutes. That is that is the longest phone call of all time. I love it. Oh, well, I'm sorry I ramble on. <laughs> Fantastic. But I just wanted to inform people, us pagans are not evil. <laughs> and I don't run around naked under the full moon and some Oh, I'm but sure you do, Marge. I'm sure you do. <laughs> not when it's 33 degrees outside. So we might speak to you next week, then, when I've got my voice back. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, you gargle with that vinegar like I told you. Warm oh, it no. and gargle it. You'll dance, I'm not gonna you'll do dance that with around for a minute. I just leave so it in it. I go all on its own, Marge. Oh, you never listen to me. Goodness, I'm an elder. You're supposed to listen to your elders. I may be a little bit older than you. But, uh, you have a good anyway, day, Marge. You, you, you be well and have a great week. You nice too. Nice talking to you. Have a nice time in Oklahoma. Bye-bye. Oh, she's gone. That was quick. Where'd she go? Hello? <laughs> Marge in Oklahoma. Thank you, Marge. Good to say hello to um, Sean. Who says, have you got any Justin Bieber? This is not a music programme, dear. Not a music programme. Thank you. Um, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm reading reading completely different conversations here. OK. Uh, wow. There was lots more to talk about. Where were we? We were talking about... Um, I told you about the black cap and that, didn't I? Yes. And, uh, right, I shall leave the rest of it, because there's some quite long, there's a couple of quite long emails here today that I wanted to do. Um, if your emails come in, I'd like to read them sort of straight out. Uh, yes, Richard's with us late this morning. Richard, I was late this morning, nearly, because I woke up at two minutes past eleven. 
which is unusual for me. Usually I'm up at sort of between nine and half past nine. For some reason this morning, because uh, it was a very good night last night, the black cap, I didn't wake up till two minutes past 11 today. And I rushed in here to turn on all the computer stuff and everything. God, nearly missed it altogether. Um, Got to say hello to Anita, who is a Barry Manilow fan, who says, Hi, Chris. It's been a while for me, but I haven't forgotten you. Thank you, Anita. Us fanalos must stick together, my dear. Sure, everything is happy in your life. My life got better last night. Flight booked. Hotel booked for Barry's first concert of 2014 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Can't wait to see the man again. Still love watching your show. Keep up the great work. Take care, your friend from Tennessee. Anita. Thank you, Anita. Yes. It's uh, not long now. I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks uh, to actually book the holiday element uh, to my to my Baron Manilow concert in Florida. I, I've got, you know, I've got the letter saying I've got the ticket and all that, um, but I haven't booked the holiday yet. I'm probably going to go. I was going to go with B. I think I'm going to go with Virgin um, Virgin holidays this time because they have a hotel there um, for me and uh, my nephew. My nephew and I. Who who's going? He won't be coming to see Barry, unfortunately, but um, uh, he was showing an interest to come into Disney, so I said I'd take him. So he's coming with us as well. And I found the hotel, the what's it called, the Enclave Suites. That's it, the Enclave Suites, and that's like a two-room room, if you see what I mean. So you've got uh, my bedroom and his bedroom as well, but within the one room, if you see what I mean. So it's not it's not like two people in one room. It's like two. You, is that what it's called? A, that's it, a suite. The Enclave Suite. So that'd be quite nice. Almost like a little flat, isn't it? So that's where I'm um, going to be staying, I hope. And it's only Virgin Holidays that do that one. You can do it separately, so you can get flights with BA and then get the Enclave Suite Hotel. But that would work out much dearer. It's better to go with the company and they do this, this deal thing. And as I told you a couple of weeks ago, we'll be doing everything by cabs and shuttle because I can't be driving in America. That will worry the life out of me. Uh, Carl. Hello, Carl in Yorkshire. Good afternoon, Carl. Who says, uh, you mentioned a tumble dryer that you had. Can you drop your tumble dryer off at mine next time you go and visit your sisters? No, because we don't come anywhere near you. And besides, I don't think you get in my little Yaris car. I won't get a tumble dryer in there. Will I? Or maybe I'd have to leave the back door open. You'll have to wait till summer now. I'm not driving up there in the winter with the back door open. Thank you very much. Um, where are we now? Oh, yes, we've got a, another message sent in by Cyber John. Now, I haven't actually listened to this message yet, so let's give this a quick play. Cyber John sending in this audio message as he does weekly oh, now. On! Hi, Chris. One thing that gives me a great deal of pleasure and also a great deal of exasperation is the use and the the misuse or more precisely the intentional misuse of words before I get to that though one of the the best usages of words are in things like books one of the greatest inventions of humankind and they can be exhilarating they can leave you wanting more they can be erotic even, although I don't tend to read that kind of thing. And they can act as a replacement. I mean, many of the books that I sell on the uh, the Friday sale day uh, are Mills and Boone kind of things. Uh, they go flying out the window compared to hardbacks by people like John Grisham. Now, his books are brilliant because you can put them under a, a wonky table leg. Or if you're very cold on a winter's night, you can throw one in the grate. But who are the greatest practitioners of the misuse, the intentional misuse of words? It's those people that you know how much I like. The marketing executives and the advertising agencies. Take this for an example. There is a ubiquitous pasty shop that is on every city's and town's street corner. In Leicester Square, if you rotate 360 degrees, you can see four of these otherwise known as Greggs, or Dregs as I prefer to call them. The other day I entered one of these exclusive delicatessens and asked for a steak pasty. Do you mean a steak bake, she asked. Uh, no, I'd like a, a steak pasty. Well, we've only got steak bakes. What's the difference between a steak bake and a steak pasty? 
She didn't know. I nearly added, the trouble with the word bake in that context is it is a verb, not a noun. Okay, says I, I'll have a chicken pasty, please. Oh, we've only got chicken bakes, she replied. Well, I said, well, that makes no sense, does it? I mean, it doesn't even rhyme. I left the shop unhampered by badly named savouries. I decided to try my luck at the in Sainsbury's around the corner. Within that establishment, I spied something on a shelf. Meal deal. Hmm. And then I was suddenly drawn into a dream sequence. I'm suddenly sitting at a polished oak table. The manager of Insanesbury's sits across from me. You want a cigar, kid? Yes, thanks. I take a proffered Havana and light it up. About this meal deal, uh, what do I get out of it? Well, he replies, you get a drink of your choice, you get a sandwich from the mid-price range, and you get a, you get a packet of crisps. Okay, I said. What's the damage? To you, kid, I'll make it three big ones. He takes a large draw on his Havana. Have we got a deal? Sounds fine to me, but I've got an issue with this uh, packet of crisps business. Go ahead, kid, shoot. Well, it says the big eat on it. What does that exactly mean? Well, it's not the big eat, you know? It's the big eat. It's, you eat it. It's big. But it's not big. It's small. And the phrase the big eat is a misuse of English. Eat is a verb, not a noun. Hey, kid, you heard the emperor's new horse? It's a bit like that, you see? You see something small, you say it's a big eat. The customer think it's a big eat, they buy it. So you're treating your customers as idiots. Hey, there are your words, not mine, okay? You want this deal or not? Well, maybe, but there's another product of yours that I dislike intensely on, on two fronts, and it's, it's called the this water. And it basically is water with a little bit of fruit flavouring in it. So, forget about it. Well, I would, but I could make this product myself by going home, filling a bottle with water and putting a slice of lime in it. This product is a complete con. But the most fundamental word crime about this product is the name This Water, because it's rubbish. It's as bad as when Puff Daddy changed his name to P. Diddy. I can only recall one advertising idea as bad as this one, and that was for the product Oasis, which showed campaign posters of men, young men, with their mouths in an O shape, but no bottle, when the phrase underneath said, Glug it down! Funnily enough, none of those advertising posters ever had a woman with her mouth in an O shape. I think you know where I'm going with that one. Look, kid, you want the deal or not? I think not. Then get out of here! Ah, uh, the dream sequence seems to be ending. So that's it, Chris. I despise the intentional misuse of our beautiful English language. Why do literature reviewers say, it's a good read? No, it's a good book. Why do football pundits say, well, it was a big ask for Charlton tonight? No, it wasn't. It was a difficult match. There are perfectly good words that you're replacing with verbs. People who misuse the language, shut up. Oh, and apologies for my terrible Italian mafia accent. Oh, come on! I think you're quite right, John, with that, what some people say now and how they talk things. One of, my, one of my bugbearers is when you go somewhere and there's someone buying something, could be, could be a supermarket, could be a restaurant, and they, they, they look at the menu and say, can I get a burger? No, it's, may I have a burger? Not can I get. This has all come from the States, you know. It's the bloody Americans. All these Americans, can I get? No, you can't get. They don't know how to talk anymore. People are losing this, and they don't care. It's only in cities. I generally in cities. You go into villages and that, and they're still quite pleasant. I wouldn't want to live in a city again. I talked to my aunt about that the other day. We wouldn't. I don't think we would want to live in a city again. Absolutely not. Um. Let me see. We've got a, another email here. One more email. I think there's one. Is it one more or two more? Uh, just have a quick check. Don't want to leave anyone out. Lots of papers. I, th I think we're going to save the rest of those stories now. I didn't realise it got so late. You know, we've been here over an hour now. Here we are. That's it. Did I mention um, uh, Sean? 
Sean wants to know, have I got any Justin Bieber? No, it's not. It's a chat show, dear. We don't do music today. Oh, you're talking about when I'm DJing? Um, well, it depends what Justin Bieber. If you want the one Beauty and a Beat, we can probably do you that one. I do play that one while I'm DJing. Beauty and a Beat. Is that how it goes? I don't know. Don't forget the email address, boys and girls, you want to join in. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk, right? Chris at United Kingdom Talk .co.uk. One more little email here from Fagash Leal. And Fagash Leal writes, Hiya, sexy. Have you left your glasses off again, darling? Leal, come, please make sure you've got your glasses on before you say things like that, my darling. All right? She says, it's up to you if you want to read any or all of this out, but I'm afraid to use you as my funeral planner. Because although I've half-heartedly looked into it for the past couple of years, it's only my recent, or possibly ultimate by the time you read this, brush with death that has made me concentrate on it. For starters, it ain't cheap to die. Mind you, being the skin flint you are, it's probably the only reason you're alive. Oh, yes. You know, it's been a couple of times I've thought, well, should I die now? And I've looked at the cost of this, boys and girls, and I thought, no. I'm not going to pay an arm and a leg to die. I shall continue to live. I've decided that now. Absolutely. How much is a how much is a basic funeral? Let's have a quick look, shall we? Should we have a look on the internet? How much basic funeral cost? One moment, please. Funerals on a here's one. Yeah, um, Lil, do you want to make a note of this, darling? Funeral on a budget. uk. Funeral on a budget. Co. Uk on the website. When a loved one has passed away, worrying about the financial burden should be the last thing on your mind. We understand, and that is why. F who writes all this old crap? We understand, and that is why funerals on a budget relieves the financial burden, allowing you to grieve without this additional worry. Harrison Funerals, founded Funerals on a Budget, provide you, the client, with a different option. A dignified alternative, all for just, gling, £975. Still seems a lot of money to me. I mean, that's two, two or three holidays in Spain. That's an economy class ticket to Australia and back. Our ethos of making a difficult time a little easier involves a direct cremation service. This financially streamlines the ceremony and leaves us to provide a dignified, respectful service at a reasonable time, uh, a reasonable price. I wonder what that means, streamlining a cremation service. I mean, maybe. What do they mean by that? Does that mean they just get you, they don't even bother with a box, perhaps? Maybe they don't even bother taking you to the crematorium. Perhaps two blokes just turn up with blow torches, place the body in your garden, and then just... <laughs> with the blow torches. After the cremation has taken place, and the ashes have been either returned to the family or strewn at the crematorium. Some of our clients in the past have chosen to arrange a private memorial service or a public life celebration for the deceased. £975, that one. Is that any good to you, um, Leo, at all? Or is that still a little overpriced? You know, actually, Leo, where I live, I am surrounded by trees and woods and all that business. I don't mind cutting down a few trees and that. 
If you could get one of your members of family, bring your body round here, place her in the garden, we'll have a little bonfire and be done with it. Cost. Ten quid. You're happy with that? Ten quid. But you'll you'll have to someone will have to bring you here though. You know, I can't be going to pick people up to here. I'll build a little fire and just set you alight like that, my darling. And actually, if you could do that in the next couple of weeks, because we've got bonfire night soon, haven't we? That'd be handy. Because we've got if you can arrange that within the next couple of weeks, Lil. And then you can go on the fire that all the kids will be building for bonfire night. Sort of kill two birds with one stone. Just a suggestion, anyway. Lil says, I fancy a cardboard coffin with a tree planted on top when I go, so check out some prices. A cardboard coffin, dear? A tree? Well, that's all cost, isn't it? Unless maybe we can get Marge to dig up one of her trees and bring it across from the States. Ah, oh, but that would be costly. Or how about, to save money there, what I could do, Lil, after you've been buried in the cardboard coffin, I reckon we can make you a cardboard coffin out of some of those boxes that they have left over in Waitrose. Well, actually, no, not Waitrose. Waitrose don't have that in there. They don't have, they don't have an area where they have cardboard boxes. But they do in Sainsbury's. I can get some cardboard boxes and maybe with my sellotape make a cardboard coffin for you and then bury it a bit but instead of spending money on trees I could because we're right the right this is the right time of year to be doing it to be honest because there are conkers and acorns everywhere around there I could just bury the books and then plant some conkers and then the roots will come down into the box and gradually enter your flesh and then start growing. Won't happen to me because my blood's poisoned. <laughs> <coughs> the plants would die. I was hoping for a cylindrical diet water can coffin. But I'm not having my leftovers. I mean family paying a fortune for that. The cheapest I could find was a coffin shaved cardboard box, possibly painted in required design for a minimum of six hundred and fifty to eight hundred pounds. What for a cardboard one? Eight hundred quid for a cardboard coffin? No, I'll make one, I'll make one. Sod that for a lark, she says. I asked about to see if any of my children or friends knew someone who could do me a cylindrical coffin cheaper. Then it struck me what a dingbat I was being. Although I drank our plenty, I can just live without it. But fags, cigarettes, not a chance. After a little online research, I discovered a plain rectangular cardboard coffin online reduced one 155 to £99. Seems like a great deal to me, so I suggest getting one of those and painting it in water-based paints. You have to be do that as it's a green burial, fair enough. Like a cigarette packet. When the brand name, when the brand name, when the brand, where the brand name should be, I want Fag Ash Lil's specials. And where the warning should be, a picture of booze. <laughs> Some witty comments connecting beer and fags. On the little side contents label, you can put all the official stuff like real name dates and all that business. Oh, just a minute, who's this now? Good morning. I knew it'd be you. Of course I'm still talking. Lev uh, 12. However, I'm on my last email now. I shall call you within 20 minutes. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's my best friend, Ron. Do you know, I noticed that he rings every week now trying to get on. Did you see that? I quickly put the phone down on him. He does. Tries to, every week he wants to be on there. No, it's my show. Do your own show. That's it. 
Back to the email. <clears throat> Coffin sorted now. Where to bury me? I used to think that since I smoked so much cremation would be apt, but I'm too much into archaeology, so would prefer a burial so they can dig me up in 2,000 years if we haven't killed each other by then and check out my grave goods. Bugger, need to check out what I'm allowed to put in there. It seems we have a new green burial ground in town, but to book a plot for 50 years, it would cost at least £600 for a single person. At least half as much a game for double and a stonking double the price if you're from outside the area. When I rang to ask some details, I think the lovely lady was hoping I was going to hand over some cash and book a plot, but on questioning her about it, if I booked it today and not died for another hundred years, then I would be out of pocket. She did say we could extend it, but how much it would cost. I also questioned what other charges there would be involved, and she couldn't think of any other other than the one I bought up, which was how much to dig the hole. Surely it can't cost that much for one or possibly two people to dig a hole, especially since I've seen mini diggers. That's mechanical ones, not short people or children. Um, working in cemeteries these days. Six hundred and fifty pounds, dear! Six hundred and fifty pounds to dig a hole for you to be buried in. That's outrageous, Lil. And she says that's just for single depth. I wouldn't mind if the diggers got paid all or at least most of that, but I'm sure it'd be on the council's minimum pay. What a rip-off. Is it really 650 quid to dig a bloody hole? Are you allowed to do it yourself? That's shocking. She says, that reminds me, I'd better ring back and see if we can dig it ourselves for free. Ah, yes. Run if we can make it a new trend. The Let's Dig a Grave Party. A bit like the ones where people move into a new house. Some people supply booze, some food, some equipment. When they all get drunk and have a jolly nice time doing the work. See? Fagash Lil. Putting the fun back into dying. I love it. I love this idea. I have yet to get in touch with the funeral directors to see how much they rip you off by. On the plus side, if you go green... Oh, behave, I mean the burial, not the body. Then you can't be embalmed, which should also hopefully save a few quid. Mind you, with the amount of formaldehyde and other chemicals I've ingested through smoking over the years, I reckon my body will last forever anyway. Ideally, I would like an open coffin on the dining table the night before the funeral, with my family gathered round, getting drunk and hopefully pouring some into my mouth through, though my eldest son has said he would also ram my mouth, nose and ears full of fags to try and revive me. What a caring son you have. I like that. He loves you still. Even when you're dead. Glad he stopped at these holes, though. By the sound of it, with split booze and lit fags, a cremation may be on the cards after all. Yes, I, I don't know how far you want to, you know, there's only certain holes that you'd want ho stuff shoved into, isn't there? Although in my ca No, it doesn't matter. On the day of the funeral itself, I want the entire city to wear black and my body to be carried in state. Do I buggery, she says. A rag and bone cart would do it for me, but I bet it would cost a fortune these days to get one, so I reckon... My final trip will be worthy of a sitcom as they try and foul to shove my carcass into the back of someone's estate car or van. If we do make it to the cemetery, which is, by the way, not the one being plugged on the website by my council, but by my local one, which is cheaper, the poor sods there only get paid 510 quid for digging a hole, that for £418 will still last me 50 years. I want music to be played as my coffin is carried to the grave. I would prefer Mike Cullen's version, if he still has a copy of it, where he substitutes Lily for Nelly. But it has to be Nelly the Elephant by the Toy Dolls. 
Lily the elephant, da 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 circus. Off she went with her trumpety trump, 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 trump. <laughs> she passed wind a lot earlier, uh, do you? I hope you're not going to be doing that while you're dead. As all my friends gather, well, the few who can be asked to turn up, are gathered around the graveside. I don't want any religious ceremony, but I do want, as my coffin hovers over the grave, for it to be paused. Why someone plays these particular lines by the clash. Should I stay or should I go now? Should I stay or should I go now? If I go, there will be trouble. And if I stay, it will be double. Then dump me in the ground and chuck soil at me until someone plays Sham 69 and hurry up, Harry. We're going down the pub. There are many more suitable songs that I would like played, but I've suggested they are saved for the wake. When my ex... Asked how long this wake would last. I suggested three days of drinking should be enough. But eldest son reckons it could be about a week. Cats are on Sarni and Nibbles duties. So don't expect any tuna or cheese. Or they have scoffed that lot already. All donations would be gratefully accepted for the bar fund. Especially to cover the cost of soft drinks. Since they charge a fortune for them. Oh yeah, tree choice. I want either cherry or apple ash tree. She wants an ash tree. Oh well, I'll plant cherries instead of um, instead of conkers if you want. Horse chestnut trees are nice though. I like the shape of those, don't you? Save this one. Don't delete it. If I live long enough, I may have more to add. And that's from Fag Ash Lil. Some good ideas there, Lil. And I think I will be going to Sainsbury's later on to look for some cardboard boxes to stick together for you. And I'll make your coffin for you, my darling, OK? Uh, is there any particular boxes that you have a preference to? I mean, do you mind Andrex? Because the boxes are quite... You know the Andrex boxes with the toilet, with the bog roll? They're quite large boxes, aren't they? Or do you want banana boxes? Banana boxes. Because they're very strong. Lil was just sent in a Skype message. She says, funeral does contain the word fun after all. I'm quite liking the idea of that, Lil. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there now today, boys and girls. We've been chatting for a very long time today and I've not got much voice left. Um, it's Saturday the 19th of uh, October 2011. If you're in the London area tonight, I'm hosting a karaoke night at the Lorry Arms, which is in Shepherd's Bush Road, London, 9pm till 1am, and it's free entry, OK? No charge at all to come to that. Apart from that, thank you for joining us today. Uh, do send us an email, boys and girls. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Right, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Or Matt... Fagashley was just sending um, she said just get the empty boxes they sell the fags in if they're not big enough I'll, I'll have to spend too much too, too much money on sellotape sticking them all together wouldn't I <laughs> madness once again the email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk that's it from the show today don't forget you can join us live every Saturday afternoon here on United Kingdom Talk. Uh, if you simply go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, look at the top there, and it will give you the link to join us every Saturday afternoon at 12 o'clock uh, in the afternoon UK, UK time. All right, I'm off to rest my voice and ring my uh, little friend back who, uh, who, who's waiting for his phone call. Bless his heart. Thank you very much, boys and girls. See you on the show next week. Bye-bye.